Hey, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we will search and find movie locations from the movie Beach Street. Today we will not focus on the actors. Instead, we'll be focusing on the movie locations and the clues that they have left behind 50 years later. Beach Street was one of the most iconic cult culture movies ever to glaze the silver screen in the 80s. The movie came at a time when everybody was ignoring the problems the Bronx was undergoing. In fact, you can tell that even the characters in the movie were ignoring their poverty. The movie is centered around a time when hip hop was just making its mark on a worldwide scale. Before B Street, it was just in the streets of the Bronx, in the streets of New York. The backbone of hip hop comes in the form of graffiti, MCing, and DJ, of which all three were displayed in this movie. The movie B Street captures not only struggle, but it catches the birth of hip hop as well. In this scene, Raymo's father is clearly upset that Raymo chooses to spend his time with his art and graffiti. Okay, so you familiar with the movie B Street, right? Yep. And you pointed out Ramo's father was on this window And he was throwing a spray can. Ali, tú vas a la 138 y lo encuentras allí en la 138, Ali. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll be on 138. That's good stuff, man. But anyway, bro, ¿cómo tú te llamas? Cano. Cano, Tato. Vaya. As I return back to the movie locations 50 years later, I am in awe as graffiti is the new hieroglyphics. It is said that only two things will survive a nuclear war, graffiti and roaches. This iconic section of the Bronx is called Longwood Avenue. One fact about the movie is that one of the main characters, Ramo, his name was taken from one of the Kings of New York of graffiti at the time, which was called Samo, aka John Michael Basquiat. Yes, Basquiat was once the king of New York in graffiti in the 80s. One of the coolest things about this tour is that if you stand on Longwood and Hewitt Place, you would come across the building and the church scene you will come across the next scene and you will come across the scene where Ramos' father is clearly upset with him and decides to throw his spray cans out the I window. I wish I knew what was the name of the iconic person who actually owned the mechanic shop, who's this guy right here. In the scene when Ramo comes to see his dad, you can see this background. I can't stress enough how, as I'm doing these clips, in my mind, I hear that song that Grandmaster Kaz wrote, which was the Beach Street theme, which went, Beach Street, the king of the beat. I said, I'm rocking that beat from a across the street. <laughs> beach Street is a lesson too, because uh, you can't let the street beat you. Uh. Heading out to my next location, I had to come this way. This little area of the Bronx 
was kind of like a pilot program in 1980. These were the first houses in the whole zip code. These houses went for about ten to twelve thousand dollars, of which today they average about two or three hundred thousand. Many folks called it the village, but many of us around the way called it Little Puerto Rico. Whether this information made Google or not, I do not know. All I do know is that while this movie was being filmed, I lived in the neighborhood. I remember the trailers parked right outside my building. At the time, hip hop was no big deal. Nobody really cared about it. In fact, hip hop would only come on on weekends after hours and believe me i was one of those kids that used to stay up and listen as the shows came on the only way that we can fulfill that hunger for hip-hop was to pop a tape into your radio and record the entire session one of my favorite scenes of the movie is when Raymo's friends came together, put some furniture in an abandoned building and made it Raymo's apartment. This might seem like a bizarre thing to do, but back then, you didn't have to worry about fire inspectors, city inspectors, Con Edison. Nobody was gonna go visit you in these buildings. The iconic artist of these sculptures, his name is John Ahern, which was twin brother of Charlie Ahern, which directed Wow Style, the movie, just one year earlier. There are times when I walk among these streets with the eye of the 80s, meaning that I could look at a piece of property and see what it was, not what it is now. How much for one fry? Just one fry. One fry. Just one fry. There was a couple of things that was happening around the same time B Street came out. The dismantling of street gangs, AKA street soldiers. It became replaced with graffiti crews and dance crews. And also across town, there was a new genre being born also. We know it now as freestyle music. The fact that the bass of the beat came from Planet Rock made it very hard to distinguish it as its own genre. So they called it Latin hip hop. Salsa was also making an explosion in New York City. Some say that Salsa was born in New York City. Many musicians were fleeing from Puerto Rico and Latin America. It took the integration of many Latin cultures in New York to form the sound of Salsa. The iconic and legendary artist known as El General is accredited to being the birth father of reggaeton in which he took dance hall and made it Spanish. While the Dominican Republic took their bass beat from a song from Shaba Ranks and called it Dembo. As always, thank you for tuning into the channel. 
for watching the video and for your subscribes.